Hi guys, it's Demi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, or if you're just joining us now, welcome. So, I'm here with Jess. Hiya! Who this is? This is Jess. Um, <laughs> watch her channel, because I don't know what I was just doing. Just watch us. <laughs> just watch us, right? Just give her a watch. <laughs> anyway, Jess also does YouTube as well, and she's featured a lot on the Daily Dose of Us weekly vlogs, um, as of kind of the last month or so. <laughs> anyway, today's video, what we're going to be doing is a Agony and We've filmed a Q&A on Jess's channel, which we talked a lot on. Yeah, we just a long uh, Yeah, one. a long one. <laughs> so if you want to watch that, head over. I'll have it linked below. Watch that, because I think Jess is going to upload that before I get around to uploading this video. On my channel, what we're going to do is an Agony and So basically, I asked for topics or anything like that, and people have sent them in. And we're just going to give you our opinion, talk about our experience of any of them if we have any and mm -hmm. yeah just give you any advice we feel we can yeah. just want to quickly say though we are not professionals any advice we give is from own personal experience and you know if you are really struggling with something don't take our advice and mm -hmm. run just yeah. like you know it is just from us it is just an so, opinion isn't yeah, it yeah it is so. just our opinion so with that being said mm -hmm. the first topic is all about cheating in relationships and more specific what do we class as cheating and if we've ever cheated or been cheated on and if we have is it the end of the road for the relationship completely a, a wide range of opinions because yeah. obviously demi's been with sean for a long time yeah. i have been single for six years <laughs> blokes hit me up right <laughs> okay get in the dms but yeah so I, I feel like we've got different um experiences that we can both yeah bring that's to why the table. i think doing an agony amp with somebody else is always good because you mm. get two opinions rather than one so as somebody who has been cheated on i think so it's hard so what classes is cheating i personally think that like it depends on the situation it depends on the people um i know a lot of people think that like do you know when there are the half of like like photos mm -hmm. on instagram and stuff people will class that as cheating i kind of think it depends on who it is and what they're liking to yeah. be honest or if they're being suggestive with it mm -hmm. um otherwise i think it's it's all right um mm -hmm. i think it's disrespectful yeah yeah but i, I don't i wouldn't say it was cheating but i wouldn't i would think it's disrespectful if someone's in a relationship and they're liking other people's yeah. photos because i i think it can it can kind of make that person feel a little bit insecure about themselves if they then look at what their partner's liked and think oh well they like that well i'm not like that and mm -hmm. they're gonna start comparing themselves and i the also person. like think what's the need for it like if you're scrolling mm -hmm. on, on instagram and you're mm -hmm. liking pictures of girls why, why? yeah like i don't see the need for you to like it because mm -hmm. to me it would be like you're liking it in hopes that the person will like be like oh see it like yeah. before or yeah um or even if it's just a general like, I, I don't mm. understand why if you're in a relationship you'd feel the need to. Yeah. Unless yeah, it was true. like a family member, a close friend or something like that. Yeah. Um, Or like someone you've known years and, you know, they've got engaged or something completely different. I'm on about a self sexy. Yeah, role, like someone, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Not like a life milestone yeah. or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But yeah. yeah, I think it is very circumstantial. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I've, I've never cheated on anyone, but I have been cheated on mm -hmm. and i think in terms of whether it's the end for the relationship um i think people can make mistakes however i wish that i just ended my relationship the first time mm -hmm. because it saved a lot of heartbreak and it saved it would have saved sorry a lot of heartbreak and it would have saved a lot of time <laughs> to be quite yeah. frank because i i was aware that my partner was cheating on us for about 10 months before i actually ended it and I confronted every single time and it was just kind of brushed under the carpet as kind of right. I'll not do it again or just denial even though I had the evidence yeah I came with receipts <laughs> if you suspect get your receipts first yeah obviously have never been cheated on or mm. I've never experienced it and I've never cheated me and Sean have been together 10 years like we might when we're 16 17 so yeah. but like if Sean cheated, for me it would be the end, 100%. Because me and him have known each other, we literally were, ev like, TMI, but we were like, what was it? To get each other's first for everything. Right. We were like first time relationship and first time, like, you know, lost yeah. baby together and stuff. So for me, if he cheated and just say slept with somebody else, not only is that like total betrayal, but also it takes away that like, thing we had i know like if you've yeah. been with other people you don't have that thing but like for me it would be like oh so now i'm not the only person you've slept with probably yeah. petty because i am the only person he's been with do you know what i mean yeah. but, but for it me it breaks the trust doesn't it, it? breaks yeah. the yeah the trust the like kind of 
dynamic and like everything like if for me it would be like nah yeah i don't have time for it yeah <laughs> no, i don't i do not have but, the like, time like imagine to. coming in sitting having your tea with like your partner mm -hmm. like you know general conversation but knowing the back of your head you've got this huge secret that you're like seeing somebody else you're out mm -hmm. with somebody else i just think it's fucking bizarre yeah no like I know. no this one says can you talk about misconceptions about influencing slash the reality of it so from, from my misconception or what i think people misconceive about it I don't know, maybe both. Cover both. Yeah. If you've got if you've got one that you know you had or mm -hmm. if you've if you have something continuously said to you that you think's wrong. Yeah, I think to be honest, since I've come into it, because my channel and my Instagram and everything grew quite quickly over yeah. like a, a period of time. And I think my misconception was that it was like that it wasn't really a job. Mm -hmm. But as I've grown into it and realised actually how much goes into you know, filming, editing, like meetings, e like keeping up right. with your admin yeah. and everything. I realised I work probably, I mean, I don't know about you, I might just be unorganised, but I probably work more hours now or more unsociable hours now than I did at an, any of my other jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that was my misconception, which I think is now still misconceived as yeah. to whether it's a real job or not. Yeah, I think... I mean, the the term, is it a real job? I mean, mm. to me, anything you can earn a living from is a job. Yeah. So, you if know. If it pays the bills. Yeah, if it pays the bills, so it's a job. <laughs> yeah. It's not a traditional job, I agree mm -hmm. with. It's not your, like, nine or five mm -hmm. traditional, you know, role. Mm -hmm. It is different in that aspect. But also, I, if, if people ask me what I do for a living, and I don't want to go down the social <laughs> media, like, I don't want to explain it, because yeah. you get questions. I'll often just say I work in the advertisement industry. Oh, do you? Yeah, because it's oh. a, it, it gives it that more corporate title. Yeah. People aren't really interested in the advertising. Mm -hmm. They don't really care as much as if you say, oh, I do YouTube or I do yeah. social media. Yeah. So, and, and you're not lying. You, that mm -hmm. is how you earn your living. It's yeah. through advertisement. So, it's just a kind of more corporate way of saying it. And I think... For me, that is the job. The job is advertising. Mm -hmm. You are self-employed. So, like, if you were a photographer or a videographer, mm -hmm. you're self-employed. Um, it's just slightly different. But I think the, it is a misconception around, yeah. is it a job or you just sit around all day? Yeah. And it's like, I understand why it looks like that, but, like, there's there's stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I think the, the difference between, like, a freelance marketer mm -hmm. and a influencer is that like the marketing is based around our lives yeah rather than a marketing person will just go to sell a product or something but don't include themselves in it so it isn't it's just marketing what we do really yeah it is but we'll bring us and i think it is based around our lives a hundred percent but then mm. you know when you're contacting a brand and if you've got like potential for a like if you've, if you've got an idea of a video or something mm -hmm. you send them work you've done don't yeah. you for example so like yeah. Like, if you were working with a cleaning brand, you would send mm -hmm. them a clean with me you'd done in the past. And although that is your life, that is mm -hmm. still a piece of content you've produced. Yeah. So I think it's very easy for people to, like... There's a lot more than what people yeah. think, basically. There's a lot more behind the scenes, scenes than what you see on a 10, 20 minute video. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it's a branded video or a piece mm -hmm. of content, there's a lot that goes on. Give it is like it's not all events and free mm -hmm. stuff and PR. It is mm -hmm. it is work and there is stuff you need to do and there is deadlines you need to meet. Mm -hmm. And there is kind of a criteria you need to meet as well. So if you produce a piece of content and your standard is just say a thousand likes and you upload this content and it gets two hundred likes, mm -hmm. the brand can ask questions because it's yeah. like that's not what we expected. Mm -hmm. Um and although it doesn't really happen as much because engagement is very up and down, like and mm -hmm. you can't really control yeah. it. There is expectations when you work with a brand as well, strict contracts in place and mm -hmm. you know, it is quite professional. I think mm -hmm. people don't understand that yeah. side of it. So yeah. no, I agree. Yeah. Next topic is five year plan take each day as it comes. So I I'm a bit of both, me. Like yeah. I think I've got my longer term goals. Um, but if an opportunity comes up sooner, like, and if it doesn't align with my longer term plan, but I still want to do it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think having a, having goals for the future is a good thing to have. And I just, I don't know. I, I think having a longer term plan for me is probably a good thing for me because I've got something to work towards, mm -hmm. but then I also live in the moment. Yeah. 
at the same time. I think I'm quite the same. Yeah. I think I have goals that I'd like to achieve or that can kind of set the direction I want to go with decisions I make now. Yeah. But if something spontaneous pops up that isn't in my five-year plan, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, do I fancy that? Do I want to yeah. do that? Um, so I think for me, it's important to have, not five-year plan, but it's important mm -hmm. to have plans ahead. Yeah. But I am a very on-the-moment type person as mm -hmm. well. Like, And I think also with setting goals, your mind, opinion and everything changes all the time. So I think as well, you can have goals, but you can change your mind on them just as yeah. quick as you set them. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's important to have a direction you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, but then also like not be like strict. Oh, but that's not going to help me get there. So I mm -hmm. can't do this. So do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I think a balance is good. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so the last one then that I do have on the topic one is coping with anxiety and depression. I think for me, I've, in terms of anxiety, I've only had, as far as I'm aware, I've only suffered with death anxiety. I've never had a, any other type of anxiety as far mm -hmm. as I'm aware. I'm not a very anxious person. I don't feel a lot of scenarios in my life I get anxious about or, you know, which is, I know I'm very fortunate because I know it cripples some people's mm -hmm. life and everything like that. But death anxiety was something I suffered from 2000 and kind of the end of 2016 to 18 was when it was at its worst. And that was when in 2016, I lost two members, who like my dog and then obviously my granddad. And that was horrible for me. I've never experienced anything like that. I did do a full video on it. I'm not going to bore you with it. And I'll have it linked below because I think it's a quite a broad topic and you'd have to go really yeah. in depth to fully explain. Mm -hmm. um, experience. I'm quite open on my channel about my experience with my like mental health and things. Um, I've suffered with like social anxiety quite a lot, right. um, which I'm now a hell of a lot better. I mean, it still lingers sometimes, mm -hmm. but like I think a year ago, I... Like, one thing that I think about is a year ago, some, not today, but sometime like in the last like year or so, I had to post a letter and I had to re make an ASOS return. I drove round to the post box of my estate, there was somebody there, so I just drove past. Really? I couldn't stop the car and get out. What? To post a letter. To communicate with that person? The, the potential, like, even the thought of them looking at me was uh, terrifying. Really? Like, I literally couldn't get out of the car, I just drove past. Um, and then, like, sometimes I would, like, in terms of returning a parcel, I'll get there and I'll sit in the car and, then, like, I would just be unable to get out of the car. Even if there was no one there or if there was people there or, like, just the, I don't know, just the thought of having to interact with someone was, like, terrifying for me. <laughs> I don't right. know. So quite often I'll walk, if I'm like going on a walk or something, I'll look at the ground when someone comes. Right. So, and it's not me being rude or anything because if they say hello, I'll say like hello, but my eyes will be, I'll glance up and look back down. A year or so ago, I'd, like I say, I had loads of returns and things that I would like, it even got to the point where I was just ended up paying, like not returning things and being stuck with loads of clothes that either didn't fit or I didn't like. Right. So... Because you couldn't get over that hurdle mm -hmm. return there. Return yeah. There. Um, and even, like, going to Aldi for my food shop, sometimes I would drive for 45 minutes to an hour before I would actually pull up at Aldi and go in. Wow. Just drive around in circles. Because I'm just building myself up to getting out of the car. To do it. Um, but then I've received CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, which kind of focuses on more like your day-to-day -day living and like it doesn't really tell you how to get over it. It just kind of, they look at, or they did for me, they looked at what I was doing in a day, um, how productive I was being, what time I was getting up, whether when I was getting up I was going straight in the shower or whether I was just going and sitting for a bit and then maybe getting ready later and making myself feel a bit more productive and gradually it built my confidence a right. bit more and now I'm fine mm -hmm. not fine but like you know I like it's it's like decreased quite a lot yeah and um, to the point where I can make me returns and I can go to the post office and I'll quite happily say hello to someone and give them eye contact yeah that's so, crazy that yeah. isn't it oh. like obviously like when you've not experienced it you do, you would mm -hmm. never think of yeah people who would be going through that yeah. Someone who uh -huh. hasn't had to go through anything like that, listening mm -hmm. to what you had to go through, I'm like, mm -hmm. fuck, like I wouldn't yeah. think twice about putting the letter in, or you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's like crazy how people get so 
anxious mm -hmm. about certain situations. It's, it's like, it's not like I would sit in the car and cry or anything. It wasn't kind of like that. It was just sort of like, I was there, I would look up and be like, I don't want to do this. And mm -hmm. I'd just drive back. Okay. Or like, yeah. But that would have impacted your life quite severely, really. Yeah. Like, because everywhere you were going to go where there'd potentially be people. Mm -hmm. So go on, when, when did you kind of get better with it? Um, I probably... Start of this year. Really? I think I only got so even at that party where we met, you yeah. were kind of still going through a bit. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think I was uh, I was better because I was drunk, but like, <laughs> but yeah, I think um, yeah, probably start of this year. I only got discharged from my sort of CBT sessions. When was it? Maybe it's a couple of months ago. Wow. Yeah, a couple of months ago. I heard you saying that on a vlog actually about you know yeah. not. So even mm. when we met for the first time outside of that event, then were you anxious mm -hmm. for that? Yeah. Oh really? Uh huh. I actually, wow. I don't, I don't think I've ever. Done. I nearly cancelled, very nearly cancelled. And when I was sat yeah. there, I was like sat there, and I was thinking, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And then I was like, oh, but like there wasn't even rational reasons as to why anything would go it wrong. It just builds up for you uh -huh. as to what could. Yeah. Oh wow, it's that. And then so like, crazy. it's it's more of a sense of like, what if there's no conversations? You know, when you sit and you're like, you, you don't know what to say, and it's go it goes really awkwardly quiet. Yeah. So you would pre worry about that. Yeah, I would think, wow. what if what if I've got nothing to say, or what if I don't know what to say? Like, I'd think of things that I want to say, but at the time I wouldn't be able to think of them. And I'd yeah. Be like, oh God, well, what if it goes really quiet? And then what if she doesn't like us? Like, what if like there was just a lot of what ifs. Yeah. Which in reality, majority never happened. Yeah. So, oh, I thought when we first met, we got on really well. It's crazy, know, isn't yeah. it? How, like, uh -huh. when you're going through something like that, your perspective, mm. and even before going, uh -huh. I think for me, I'm just such a talkative person. I can yeah. talk the ears of a bottle. Like, I will literally just talk. Uh -huh. So I think for me, I've never... I find anything to talk about. Yeah. I think it would be very hard for me to have a really, like, awkwardly silent <laughs> chat with someone, yeah. like, meeting with someone, because uh -huh. I think I just talk. Yeah. So I think... For me, I've never ever considered anything like that really pre meeting someone. Mm -hmm. But obviously, like now, knowing that you had thought that before, it's like, God, like, yeah. it's really sad, really. Because mm -hmm. imagine if you'd cancelled. I know. You wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, it kind of got to the point where, like, I mean, again, we were going through a pandemic, there wasn't really many people to talk to. Yeah. Um, that would have set you back. Yeah. Or, like, so did you have it before the pandemic? Um, I did, but not to the extent that it was. I think the, the pandemic really did impact it more so. Yeah. I did always have it, but it was less kind of Because I suppose noticeable. in a working environment and that as yeah. well, you kind of have to yeah. talk to people. Yeah. So I suppose that helped you along in certain ways, maybe. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But... God. Well then, <laughs> so this video got really deep. It did. <laughs> very deep, very quick. Yeah. So we obviously give you our experience on things and try to give you the best advice we can from our perspective. Mm -hmm. But if you are going for anything, I just want to reiterate. Re 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 I just want to <laughs> make sure that you do speak to professionals mm -hmm. and, you know, don't take anything we said and run with it. Like, mm -hmm. take it with a pinch of salt. If you haven't already, please go and subscribe to Jess. I'll have her channel linked below. And follow her on Instagram. <laughs> she basically posts the same style of content as me. Um, so if you like my content, you will love Jess. Um, and you will see me featuring coming months. Might already yes. have a video up there. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you would like to do this again, let yeah. me know. And we can. Any more topics you'd like to hear our opinions on, pop them below. And without further ratatat, we'll see you very shortly for another video. Bye. Bye.